Hello friends, The Bourbon Nerd here. Welcome to lesson 13 in my bourbon school. So today I am going to talk about accelerated aging. So that's a topic of how you can sort of um, age whiskey faster than mother nature normally does it, right? So it's actually a very fascinating topic. And today I am sipping on a 12 year old old fangle nutter bourbon from uh, Bourbon Brawls. So 12 year old cast strength. Pretty nice. Just gonna take a quick sip here. Cheers, y'all. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. All right, so accelerated aging. So I'm actually gonna cover three topics today. So, and the three topics are sort of subtopics, but don't worry, it's not gonna be too long video. So, um, I'm going to talk about something called heat cycling, which is a way that you can actually get more season, more than four seasons in a year. So it's a pretty interesting. I'm also going to talk about some of the standard methods uh, that has been used uh, forever, but they're used in sort of like a slightly different way to accelerate the aging of whiskey. And then finally, um, I'm going to explain to you a few fun topics, you know, on how using modern technology, how some, Whiskey manufacturers have started experimenting with accelerating whiskey, uh, aging a whiskey in some, um, let's say, weird and interesting ways, right? Okay, but let's get started. Let's take the easy one first. So heat cycling. So as you can see here, I'm returning to a picture that we've seen many times. It's a picture of a whiskey stave. And as you probably remember from previous lessons, um, as the temperature heats up in the barrel, the whiskey penetrates the wood in the winter or when it gets colder, it gets out of the wood. So in and out and in and out of the wood. So the whiskey is breathing. And that's basically how whiskey is aging, right? But there are some companies that have figured out, so why only have four seasons? So the, re the, the way that they can get away with getting more than four seasons is that they can actually just install pretty much like a big AC unit or something similar to that, right? So when it gets really, really, really hot in the summer, they actually cool down the warehouses. So it gets maybe not winter, but, but much colder. And they actually do the reverse in the winter where they heat up the warehouses. So um, I have a couple of uh, logos here, you know, um, mixtures are very famous for this and also Woodford Reserve. Um, mixtures sort of, they, they, they tell us that uh, they can get about six seasons out of, uh, you know, a year, right? So that actually means, so probably if you make, make the math, you know, so when they, you know, age a whiskey for like six years, they have probably got uh, aging out of it 10 amount to eight or nine years. So that's quite interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of mixtures, no surprise there. Um, and their products are really good. Um, I haven't really tried them, obviously, without heat, heat cycling, but it's, it's a pretty good idea. Um, it does use a lot of energy, of course, but it actually also do reduce, of course, the angel share a little bit. Um, so, so there's sort of like the financial side is, is probably okay there as well. So that's sort of, sort of number one thing here, heat cycling. Many companies do this and mixtures and wood for reserves are just some of them, right? Okay. But now it gets a little bit more interesting because then uh, I'm going to talk about the standard methods um, that has been used forever, but, but used in a different way. And I sort of found four topics here. And as you can see in the disclaimer at the bottom of the list here, this list is not exhaustive. There, there are all kinds of variations of this. And you'll also see that on the final section of the video. So the four things I'm sort of going to cover is the use of small barrels um, and also making grooves inside the staves. Um, you can also age whiskey um, either at sea or on the road or probably other places. And then finally, I'm going to talk about putting extra staves and pellets and wood chips in the barrels themselves to sort of accelerate the aging. So let's make, let me quickly go through all four of them. All right, the first one, small barrels. Um, you actually have seen this picture on one of my previous lessons, if you watch all of them. Um, and as you may recall, the standard American whiskey barrel is 53 gallons, about 200 liters. Um, and some of the manufacturers, I have a couple of logos here, you know, Dad's Hat, funny name, and also Hudson Whis Whiskey in New York. They have been using this for a while, right? And the thing is, the smaller the barrel gets, 
the higher wood to liquid ratio it gets. So the smaller the barrel, the more, you know, wood per gallon of, of, of whiskey, if you will, right? But um, it also, so it, it matures faster. Um, it's also, of course, more expensive to go this way because um, actually the, the large barrels are per gallon much less expensive, uh, much cheaper uh, than, uh, than the smaller barrels. Um, and I've tried some of these whiskeys. Um, I'm, I'm not like like a super fan of of, uh, of all the products that come out in smaller barrels, but I, I do like the idea. I mean, you know, it's always nice when people experiment. So one way to do this is simply to get small barrels and then accelerate the aging a little bit in that way. Okay. Next up is grooves in the staves. And there are actually a handful of manufacturers that um, use this technique. The idea is that the surface area inside the barrel, you can probably see it here. Um, there's, there's a stave there with these grooves cut into it. And you can see sort of maybe a little bit difficult for you to see on, on the picture here. But there's, there's a lot of, you know, grooves inside the barrel itself. And the whole purpose is to uh, sort of... Um, make the surface area inside the, the barrel larger. So the more surface area, uh, the more access the whiskey have to the wood. That's also, by the way, why you char the, the barrel. So there's more, more access to the wood there as well. And, and one very, very famous um, uh, manufacturer of this is Jack Daniels, as you can see here. They, they do have um, a, a special Jack Daniels uh, for Sinatra, Sinatra Select. Um, and that they that they are use exclusively these uh, grooves in 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 the barrels as well. It's also a quite expensive uh, 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 ball as well. Um, I mean, Frank Sinatra was uh, a really big fan of uh, Jack Daniels, and the rumors has it that uh, there are two things inside uh, uh, Sinatra's uh, coffin: the Sinatra himself and then a bottle of Jack Daniels. I know not if it's true, but it's it's actually a good story. So that's one way to get sort of accelerated aging. Uh, you can get more access to the wood, so the wood, so the whiskey matures faster. All right. Next up is uh, aging at sea and on the road. Um, you may have heard about this guy before. He's uh, called Trey Soller. Uh, he's sort of uh, the guy behind Jefferson's Bourbon. Uh, very famously, he um, they, they have a special line of the product called Jefferson's H at Sea or H, uh, a Ocean H at Sea. Um, and, and it basically takes some of the barrels and they put them on ships that go around the equator. And you can go in the website and follow exactly where these uh, special editions of, of their whiskey has been. And, and it's basically all over the world, right? And the whole idea is that while the whiskey barrels are in um, on these ships, right? Uh, of course, because of the waves, you know, it agitates the barrels a whole lot. So there's a lot of interaction between the wood and the whiskey. And the whole premise here would be that it uh, ages faster or in more interesting ways, right? So um, there are a few companies that do this, but Jefferson are probably the ones that, that sort of nailed this for, for sure. And, and they're, they're the only one that are really famous for this. Another uh, deal would be to age them on the road. And as you can see at the bottom here, um, maybe it's a marketing trick, I don't know. But they actually, um, Whistle Pick, you know, uh, took some barrels on the road for a race car show um, and, you know, basically uh, took this truck across, uh, the, uh, across the US. I don't know if it's Route 66 or whatever, and then back again. And of course, exactly the same thing like with the uh, HSC. Uh, you know, the, it agitates uh, the whiskey in the in the barrels and it sort of get a lot of interaction there as well. So again, accelerated aging there. I haven't, I've tried the um, Jefferson's Ocean HSC many times, absolutely love that product. I've not tried uh, the Whistle Pick edition of this as well, but but it's fun. And, and again, as I always say, I love when people try something new. I'm not always a fan, uh, but sometimes I think it's just fun, right? Moving on, um, so uh, quite a few companies have started experimenting with putting extra staves inside the, the barrels. That, that's right, so they open the head of the barrel, so they put extra staves in it and then put on the the, the barrel head again. Uh, Maker's Mark, they're very famous for this. They have this 46 edition, if you ever try that. It's actually pretty nice. I'm not a huge Maker's Mark fan myself, but the 46 product is actually pretty good. And you can even have different types of staves. And I think they have a tasting experience where you can sort of make your own mix uh, if you buy a whole 
barrel if you sort of like a store or whatever. It's, it's pretty nice. So that's the one to, to the far left there. They're, they're quite famous for doing these extra staves in, in, inside the barrel for, for extra aging. And also the one next to me here um, is actually uh, aged with pecan uh, chips, pecan or pecan, let's say pecan chips. Um, and that also, and you're going to use all kinds of chips there. As long as you write on the label what you've done, it's fine, right? You can write straight bourbon as long as you just write whatever you've done after the fact on the on the label. So, so that's fine. So they're all kind of uh, chips I've seen. Cherry chips, um, applewood chips, etc. But this specific specific one is with pecan chips, and it gives. Uh, I actually ch not tried this one, but I tried a similar one. It, it it's interesting, I will say, and that's also another way to do it. The one in the middle is a little bit of a stretch because they actually did not put uh, wood pellets uh, in the actual bar uh, barrel. Um, it's um, it's a you know collaboration between Traeger. I'm a huge Traeger fan. I, I love my Traeger grill uh, and and whistle pick, which I also really like. So so I, I think that was very interesting. So what they actually do is that they smoke, uh, do extra smoke of the barrels, and the smoke comes simply from from Traeger pellets. Um, so so this one it doesn't really have pellets in it, but it's sort of. Uh, enhances the matureness and the aging of the whiskey with this extra smoking and extra flavor that they would not normally get from normal toasting and charring. Let's look at some of the modern technology. I'm taking a little extra sip here because some of this is, um, I wouldn't say weird, uh, I love progress. I've said that numerous times, but as you will, you'll see in a couple of minutes when, when this video is over, um, some of them uh, are, are, are truly fascinating. Okay, so what I'm going to cover today is something uh, from Cleveland Whiskey. Uh, they are using pressure tanks. I'm also covering something called the Terra Pure method from Green River Distilling. I will also be looking at sonic aging uh, from Copper and King, uh, which actually don't make whiskey, but hang in there. I'll explain why I added them and also Hudson whiskey as well. And then I'm going to cover ultrasound at the end, which is probably the weirdest of them all. Well, maybe they're all weird, Let, let's see. Okay, let's dig into them. And also at the end of the list here, as you can see, the list is not exhaustive. There are so many methods out there, but I mean, the video is already getting too long if I need to, need to cover more of them, okay. Pressure tanks. So when I heard about Cleveland whiskey the first time, I, I must admit I was very skeptical. I mean, what's going on there? But once I actually watched a couple of videos and actually took my time to research what they did, I, I'm um, I'm intrigued. I have not tried this product. I, I and I promised myself that next time I'm I'm in a store where they have a Cleveland whiskey, I'm I'm going to try it. So basically, what they do. Um, they take little cubes, as you can see here, the guy holding the cubes in the hand, of um, uh, wood types that cannot hold liquor in a good way. As we probably covered in one of the very first lessons is, oak is really, firstly, it's a law, and second thing, there is a reason why it's a law, oak is phenomenal at holding the liquor, the integrity is very, very good. Cherry uh, or applewood, as an example, would have given fantastic flavors to whiskey. I'm sure it's just so um, porous that 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 you know maybe after a year or something with the whiskey in in the in the barrel made from applewood, all the whiskey would have gone. It would have evaporated because it's simply not too too close enough uh, to to hold it. Um, but why 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 skip out of you know those wood types that really give a good of a good amount of flavor? So what Cleveland whiskey has done is that they have done exactly that. So they have taken, for instance, black cherry wood, which is this, this example. So they put it, as you can probably see in the uh, lower picture, they put it into um, a sort of like a metal box, and then they lower it into the um, uh, the, the whiskey itself, and then by using pressure you can you can maybe almost see it not not really on this picture too well but um they put it you put it into a pressure tank and they put pressure on and remove the pressure and put pressure on and remove the pressure uh, and then after a little while uh all that nice flavors from the black cherry or the apple wood or pecan wood or whatever it is has mingled with the whiskey i think it's a very good idea so in this example here they only store the whiskey for six months in the barrels and then they actually do the remaining of the aging uh, literally just for a day in this. And then they get 
uh, this apparently very nice whiskey after only six months. So it's so an interesting uh, concept there. So Cleveland whiskey right there. All right. Next up is uh, Terra Pure. Um, Terra Pure is, is similar-ish. Um, um, and you'll see the remaining, there's sort of a little bit of, of a theme here. You know, it's either uh, pressure or ultrasound or something modern technology there as well. So Terra Pure um, is, uh, I think uh, it, the, um, it, they own the technology by a company called Terra Essential. Um, and the Terra Essential, they um, actually hired this guy. Uh, he's called O.C. Taylor. And uh, that's a guy you can see on the picture here. And they also at one point bought a distillery. Uh, and they renamed it after after O.C. Taylor, uh, Tyler, um, and it was, I think, a couple of years ago, maybe last year, can I remember? It was renamed Green River Distilling Company, which you may have heard about before. And they use these contraptions, as you can see in the picture here, again, using ultrasound, um, uh, other ways of, of uh, making the wood interact with the whiskey so, so it's a very very special way of doing it they're not um they're not um revealing too much about their technology so i cannot go into a lot of depth but you can you can read occasional um um articles about why, why they why they use it and how they use it um after they became green river stilling they're sort of toning down this procedure a little bit i'm actually not sure if they're still using it uh, but they were sort of the one that they become very famous at one point with this uh, Terra Pure um, technology. All right, just two more left and then we're done. All right, Sonic Aging. I find this really interesting. So there are two companies that um, that use this. Um, I don't know who came up with the first, um, maybe they did it at the same time, but Copper and King, they're actually making brandy, they're not making whiskey, but also Hudson uh, Whiskey Company uh, in New York, they also do it. The idea is, if you wonder what that black box next to the barrels, I don't know if you can see it on the picture, it's a big loudspeaker. And basically, um, the idea would be that they play music or something with really, really deep bass, um, so get so it gets these barrels to vibrate. And so, so um, this uh, sonic aging, as they call it, it's interesting. The the idea would be as as the barrels. And the, of course, the whiskey in the barrels, they start to vibrate. Uh, there is going to be more contact with the wood. And then basically, you know, you have accelerated aging right there. So interesting, right? And then the final one, and I promise you, I have not made this up in Photoshop. It's a real product. You can check it out. Um, and I, I'm, I'm so fascinated about this last one here that, uh, and I'm going to show you in a second that I, I'm so close to just buying one to see if that can really be true. And that is something called the ultrasonic accelerator. And as you can see in the picture here, it almost looks like something, um, if you have a like, like a shaver, uh, you put it in for, for cleaning, or you had jewelry or whatever, uh, this ultrasound, I don't know if you ever clean jewelry and, and watches or whatever with ultrasound. It looks like one of them that you put in here. The idea would be, uh, as you can see here, I know it's not bourbon, uh, it's Scotch whiskey. So um, both in um, in aging and price, there's quite a big difference between Johnny Walker Red Label, which is one of the most famous whiskeys in the entire world, and Johnny Walker Black Label. The idea would be that you take a Red Label, Johnny Walker, put it into this contraption and turn it on. And three or four hours later, you have uh, sort of agitated the whiskey to an extent uh, where it becomes, you know, almost like a black label. So, so definitely something with more age. I really don't understand how this works because there's no wood anymore when the bar when the bottle is in there. Um, and I, I read quite a few articles and I, I still don't understand what's going on there. So, I mean, leave me a comment or whatever if you figure out what, what is going on because this is fascinating. And as you can see here, also put in a maker's mark and they also on the website have an, a small demo of where they put in a Knob Creek Rye um, where they don't claim that it becomes older per se, but they, they claim that the whiskey becomes more mellow, uh, more approachable. Maybe I could understand that a little bit. Uh, that that may, may or may not make sense. So. So there you have it. I mean, a lot of interesting ways to um, to try to cheat nature, nature because you know 
If you make vodka, you, you distill it and the next day you can sell it. If you make gin, you distill it in a couple of weeks, you can sell it. If you make whiskey, you have to wait for years and years before you could sell it. So I understand why this is tempting. And, and a lot of people are trying to see if they can sort of cheat mother nature a little bit. I think it's fine with heat cycling. That, that, that's totally fine. And I also think, you know, adding staves and pellets and chips is also fine. No problem there. Of course, when it gets more and more into these modern technologies, I still want to taste it myself and still want to see where this is going. It hasn't really caught on too much, but, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm still in a positive, uh, uh, mood. So, so let's see where this is going. So thank you for, uh, watching this video and see you hopefully soon. Thanks.